Hi, I'm Andy from Wirestorm, and today I'm here to show you how to set up our Network HD 400 series 1 gigabit 4K HDR AV over IP solution. Wirestorm are proud to offer three different technologies for our network connected distribution and control solutions. This offers designers true flexibility to optimize their installation goals while effectively managing tight time and budget constraints. Choosing the right technology for the right application is the first step to finding the perfect fit for your customers. The Wirestorm team are always here to help. Our pre-sales literature found at wirestorm.com is the perfect starting place to help choose the perfect Network HD series for your needs. For detailed information about the Network HD solution, the Network HD product guide and the technical reference guide are just what you need to get started. This instructional video is typical for any Network HD series. Wirestorm have chosen to maintain common, industry standard switch configurations and setup software. Network HD utilizes multicast with IGMP, so you can rest assured that these features have been standardized by the IT industry for decades. A few simple configurations and your switch is ready for Network HD. Here, I will run through the configuration of my switch using its web UI. With any switch, the concepts are the same, although the UI might look a little different on another switch. First, I will log into my switch and enable multicast filtering. If your switch has the option, please enable it. Multicast filtering is the key process that can separate different multicast streams to different physical switch ports. Next, I will ensure that IGMP snooping is enabled. This is the standardized process by which a switch can analyze their requests by Network HD decoders and maintain a multicast filtering table so that the switch can correctly direct traffic and switch decoders to different encoders when required. In my single switch example, I will also enable immediate or fast leave. This just helps give a small reduction in switching time. The rest of the settings here I will leave enabled as default. Since I only have one default VLAN in my setup, I will ensure that these settings apply from my default VLAN ID. I will enable my IGMP querier, which is a good practice, especially if I wish to expand the Network HD system to other switches in the future, and ensure that we are using IGMP version 2. Now to remove any concern about service restrictions or PoE power settings that might be part of an energy saving feature on the switch, I'm going to check that any energy saving options are disabled. This simply helps maintain a solid and predictable switch performance at all times. For the most part, the switch is now configured correctly for use with Network HD. In my case, because I'm using the 400 series, I will ensure that jumbo frames are enabled. In some switches, this feature is enabled by default, and in those cases, you may not need to enable anything. As jumbo frames relates to the maximum number of bytes present in the payload of an Ethernet frame, some switches may alternatively offer a configurable MTU attribute. This can simply be set to 9000. If you are unsure, you can easily refer to the relevant switch guide available from wirestorm.com. The final and most important step is to make sure that I save my switch configuration so that it is maintained when the switch is rebooted. A switch must also be rebooted after these configuration changes are made as some of them only come into effect after the switch is restarted. Now that my switch is configured for use with Network HD, I can begin to connect components. At Wirestorm, we ship complete. Everything you may need for an encoder or decoder is included in the box. We decided to include all device accessories and remove the need to order different peripherals as different part numbers. This not only removes complexity, but ensures that you have everything you need when you turn up on site. Any installation team has to be mindful of the time they spend on site. Organization is key. This is why Wirestorm recommend that you download our switch mapping worksheet from wirestorm.com. This provides the installation team with a valuable record of each Network HD encoder or decoder MAC address, along with where it is located and what source or display it is connected to. As you will see later in this video, this cuts down the time required to identify devices within the configuration software and maintains a time-saving list for use with any future system expansion or maintenance. Placing Network HD encoders or decoders behind a display or in an AV or IT rack couldn't be simpler. The included wall mount brackets allow for vertical wall mounting of devices. 
Just look at the text on the decoder to orient correctly and optimize airflow. With cable entry on one side of the unit and a status light on the other, even when hidden behind a display, a nicely organized installation is achievable. For rack mounting Network HD devices, Wirestorm offer Network HD rack mount kits to provide a high component density across a minimum number of rack units while optimizing thermal efficiency and quick, simple maintenance. With Network HD components installed and their MAC addresses and locations noted in the worksheet, we are ready to begin connecting encoders and decoders to the network switch. Firstly, plug in the Network HD controller, the CTL, to the switch, ensuring that you connect the network interface labeled AV. This is also the PoE power port if you're using a PoE switch. Then plug in your encoders and decoders to the switch. The components will indicate when they are ready by observing their status lights. In the meantime, on a Windows machine, go to Wirestorm.com and download the latest versions of the Wirestorm Management Suite and also the latest firmware versions for the Network HD devices. Once you have downloaded and installed the Wirestorm Management Suite, you are ready to configure your system. The factory default IP addresses for Network HD devices use the IPv4 Link Local Address Block and Stateless Address Auto Configuration. This means that they will assign themselves an arbitrary IP address but within a known subnet. This subnet will be 169.254. Wirestorm recommends that you manually assign an arbitrary IP address to your wired network adapter all the same, so that accidental connection to a DHCP server will not make the Network HD system unreachable. For this example, I will use the IP address 169.254.1.100 and a subnet mask of 255.255.0.0. Once you have set your IP address, the next step is to ensure that you are up to date with the latest Wirestorm features. This can be done easily by installing the latest firmware for Network HD encoders and decoders using the Network HD maintenance tool. Simply click search and the devices will be listed in the left device area. At Wirestorm, we understand that time is money. This is why using Wirestorm's configuration software, you can apply settings and firmware in mass across multiple devices simultaneously. Up to 50 devices can be upgraded in the time it would take to upgrade a single device, a real time saver. Simply select all encoders and navigate to the latest Wirestorm firmware you just downloaded. Applying the firmware will load and install the latest features set to all your devices in one simple operation. Managing firmware in this way also means that the integrator has control over features and updates, something that is not achievable if you are forced to upgrade automatically, as is unfortunately often the case with network connected equipment. Once this is finished, I will do the same for my decoders. Now I will update my network HD controller. The CTL has a convenient web UI that can be used within a browser and thus used for remote access. As we will see later, both network interfaces on the CTL can be used with its web UI, so it doesn't matter if you chose to keep your network HD switch in isolation from another network. Access to the web UI is password protected, so I've just used the factory defaults here, admin and admin. We can change these later. The CTL web UI gives you access to many network HD features and feedback. For now, we'll just load the CTL firmware files in the relevant places in the UI and wait for the CTL to reboot. So now we are all up to date, we can start to configure our Network HD system. A single, uniform configuration environment allows for administration tasks across the Network HD family, no matter if using 100, 200, 600s, or in this case, the 400s. This software is Network HD Console. You'll notice that the CTL is automatically discovered on the right pane. This is showing a healthy green status icon. To search for my encoders and decoders, I can simply click the search button and wait for my devices to show up. Network HD encoders will show up in the right pane and decoders will show up in the left. At this point, you'll notice that each device is identified by a host name, which includes the device MAC address. At this point, we can refer back to our worksheet from earlier and rename the alias of each device with a relevant label. It is recommended that you prefix each alias with in for an encoder or out for a decoder, as you can see here. 
The alias prefix is what Wirestorm control system drivers look for when used with Network HD, and it also gives the installer the ability to fix a defined index to each device. The rest of the alias should reflect a meaningful description of what the device is connected to, such as set top box one or lobby display. Next, we can take advantage of the Network HD decoder grouping facility. Decoders can be grouped so that different areas of a property can be shown together within console, but also within Network HD Touch, Wirestorm's free iPad control app for Network HD, as we'll see later. Now things really speed up. Within console, all remaining encoder and decoder settings can be administered in batches of large quantities rather than going through a laborious task of configuring each device independently, where you need to change a setting from its default value. The batch settings window allows for IP addresses, HTCP video and scalar settings, EDID, custom idle screens, audio settings, and etc. to be changed for a group of devices. A huge time saver and one of the key aspects of a Wirestorm AV over IP solution where labor cost savings can be made. I'll configure a few settings here and apply these settings to my decoders. One of the first things I will batch assign is the IP addresses for the devices. Wirestorm highly recommend making the IP addresses of components statically assigned. The Network HD 400 series offers a low resolution, low frame rate, unicast motion JPEG video preview an extremely useful preview of the source content that can be used for control user interfaces or source monitoring in a browser. Now that we have discovered all devices, we can now fix the IP addresses to known static values. These values could be set to any subnet requirements you may have, but since I am keeping my Network HD scope isolated to my switch and I don't need to route anything, I will just keep the default IP addresses but make them static. I can do this by assigning a starting and finishing IP address and subnet mask here and clicking apply to configure the entire set of encoders in one hit. After my devices have rebooted, I will make a few more changes to settings I need for blocks of encoders and decoders in the same way. Some installations require multiple monitors arranged in a video wall to display a single source. In this example, I have a simple 2x2 video wall with a decoder plugged into each display in the wall. I can configure the wall by choosing a decoder group I created earlier, and create a wall assignment by simply clicking the Create VW button here. I will now create a scene for my video wall where the four physical displays can be combined to make a single logical display. To associate decoders with the video wall, I will simply drag from the left onto the video wall scene. I will now combine the four displays to form a video wall by selecting all and choosing the option to combine. Lastly, I will assign a default encoder for the video wall scene. This will be the default source assignment whenever reverting back to this configuration. If I wanted, I could add more scenes for different modes. On this 2x2, for example, I could have four separate displays should I need it. Now that the four displays are no longer combined, I can drag four unique encoders onto the scene. On a 3x3 wall, for example, I could have a scene that set a 2x2 combined logical display and the rest of the five displays routed to independent encoders. Creating scenes in this way is a quick and easy way to recall preset video wall layouts from a control system or from Network HD Touch. Now that we've configured our Network HD system, we should save a console backup file and upload the configuration to the Network HD controller. This is simply achieved by clicking the Upload option in the right-click menu here. For more detailed information on using the Network HD console, you can take a look at our videos and literature found at Wirestorm.com. Network HD Touch is a free app for iPad. Not only does it offer a simple and convenient user interface to allow drag-and-drop video switching at the flick of a finger, 
but it also can be used to test and commission any Network HD configuration wirelessly before introducing an alternative control system if this is required. The layout for Network HD Touch is stored on the CTL. So once you have entered the IP address of the CTL in the app, aliases and groups are automatically presented with no further configuration required. You can download the app from the App Store today to take advantage of the included demo mode, which allows you to show the power of Network HD absolutely for free. Integration with third-party control systems couldn't be easier. As we saw earlier, the Network HD controller has two isolated network adapters. This allows for a control system attached to a different network to communicate with the Network HD system, but still be completely isolated from the switch running IGMP and multicast filtering. In this way, the Network HD system can be treated as an isolated block, minimizing the impact on an existing main network and removing any complexity that might be associated with network setups. Of course this isn't required, but in commercial deployments, configuring an existing network switch can prove to be time consuming. With a CTL offering an easy solution, an isolated AV over IP switch can be a real quick problem solver. With free drivers for major control systems available from WireStorm.com, the Network HD solution can be one of the fastest to deploy and most simple AV over IP systems on the market today. For everything from switch configuration guides, technical details, and extended tutorials, please visit WireStorm.com. My name's Andy, and happy installing.